This is Venus and Mars. This is worth sharing because we're at a remote village in far out New Mexico near the Pecos River where an ancient village that has been there for hundreds of years is doing their annual ditch cleaning festival. It is an example of water management in the most ancient of ways. We wanted to share it with you because it will tell us something about today's environment. Families get together and they clear these waterways because they realize the importance of water and we're here doing it with about probably 50 or 100 people from different parts of uh, New Mexico. And it's very nice. And it's very nice. And that's the Pecos River right there. Thank you. Jose Se de Vaca. And we're at El Cerrito, New Mexico, which is about uh, two miles below the Villanueva State Park. And I think uh, the church, local church here, says it all. The name of the church is Nuestra Señora de los Desamparados. And what that means for those not speaking the language is the place of the forlorn or forgotten ones. So as the whole valley got established and developed, uh, this was one of the areas that uh, got developed, but it was kind of away from the river because of the geography. And uh, this is an annual thing taking Okay, here we are at the Pecos River. This is an obscure place. Uh, Candido Aragon. Uh, they talked about a date of the first core that showed 1790-95. So what's the history of it? Okay, this, uh, this community of El Cerrito was established back in the 1500s by the Spanish settlers who came up the Pecos Valley, Pecos River. They settled in here and at the time when you had a lot of Spanish um, expeditions in this part of the country, through people came here and settled this community. Huh? And they take uh, care of their own piece of property, right sir? Well, on this day everybody comes together and works together as a total group. Yeah. Total community effort, and uh, so you, there's about a hundred people in that ditch over there. I don't know if you've seen them. So they go way upstream then, huh? Yeah, they go all the way around. They should be coming around the bend on the other side. If you were to get a good picture, there's about a hundred people over there. College kids. So you say this may be as much as three or four hundred years old? Not this section, but the original ditch. Yeah, I yeah. would say. Yeah. It has to be because they were they've been here that long. Yeah. What do you think, Sonny? Oh, I think it's great. Community being involved and do a positive thing. This is the, this is the Pecos River in Cerritos, El Cerritos. The Spanish came through here following the Pecos River. They found Indians in here growing corn. And the Indians gave way to the Spanish. The Spanish gave way to the Mexicans. The Mexicans uh, and the Americans are here today. Sonny, tell us what you see here on this ledge. Oh, it's a beautiful piece of uh, rock that I think there is some, might be some uh, kind of uh, false gold. Uh, Fool's gold? Which, yes. Yeah. And it's layered. With each layer, you see a different epoch of time, uh -huh. uh, erosion, whatever. Yes. If yes. you were. I'm trying to get a sample, though. It's kind of a little bit, have to be careful because the layers might come down. Yeah. Yeah, so, see? Yeah. Okay. See, see the powder? Yeah, it's got a, a yellowish tint to it. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay. <clears throat> when, when the Spanish came here about 500 or 600 years ago to this village, they delivered this system for watering their plants and crops, all like a circling around the city and uh, they of course they have to maintain it so every year here in this village they are keeping the same tradition all the family members they put aside their differences because they know if they all get along at least one day and clean up these ditches 
it's going to help for the delivery of the water. So they put aside all their political, religious, family, business disagreements one day out of the year. That's right. Because they know how important. How important is the water? Actually, water is life. And by doing so, putting the differences aside, they let the life go on. If don't do that, <laughs> of course, you have there's death. life. <laughs> there may be a modern application to that, huh? Yes, that's right. That's right. <laughs> what time of year the families get together? The Spanish knew, as did the Indians before them, that this country can be very bountiful if you just give it water. And so therefore they realized the importance of water. And the Spanish built and settled here. And all these people were here today helping redig the ditches. This is fascinating. Um, my name is Joe Quintana. I'm a resident of El Cerrito. I've, I've been living here uh, for 33 years now. And I remember the day when uh, some of the, the neighbors and some of my relatives uh, were involved with the Corps of Engineers. Well, they did a, a core sampling on the bank of the Ezequia Madre, which is the, the ditch that actually feeds the, the community. And uh, according to what I remember hearing from one of my, my cousins, who was uh, Candido Aragon, uh, they talked about a date of the first core that showed 1790-95, something like that, as when the ditch was actually first uh, worked with. And uh, ever since that time, I believe that um, you got to look at what the Spanish did and what, how they ran the Indians out, yeah. how they took their homes away from them. Yeah. But, but yes, there is a number of signs. In fact, this community, I believe, was uh, more than anything else, built in the style of the uh, American, American Indian. Don't you suppose the Indians grew corn here before the Spanish and Americans got here anyway? Don't you think? Um, I think this may have been a resting place along the river yeah. for the Native Americans. This yeah. may have been one of those stopping points yeah. uh, because there is evidence, especially like on my property, where at some point uh, in the distant past, there were uh, little places where people were camped out. Yeah. And you teach special ed in Las Vegas. <laughs> I'm a high school teacher in Las Vegas, New wow. Mexico. I work for West Las Vegas Schools as a special ed teacher. I appreciate your love for this culture. It's oh, wonderful. This is something that's not really a love, it's an obligation. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> okay. Thank you. No, thank you. Mexico. These people appreciated water management, didn't they? Yes, and uh, of course uh, people uh, lived off the land here, and at one point in time, there was many as 73 different people living in this little village that supported them. But uh, times change, but uh, there's still, the lands are being worked here, and every year uh, the ditch has to be cleaned out. La limpiaza de la sequia. And, uh, what does de la sequia mean? Of the ditch. So la sequia. sequia just means ditch then? It's ditch, and I think, I think it's a uh, Arabic word huh. in uh, and anyway uh, so it's uh, the culture as we understand it was uh, in this country was passed through the, the native population the indigenous population and then picked up by the Spanish that were living here so every spring uh, uh, people uh, gather together and bring uh, manpower called peones and you are an assessed uh, so much manpower based on how many acres that you bring under irrigation. There's approximately 100 acres under Almost irrigation there. here. I see. So we have, uh, I think, 43 peones. But, uh, for example, uh, if the ditch is about a mile long, right, and if you're one peon, uh, your share would be roughly uh, uh, whatever, 5,280 feet I was see. your percentage. But if you have to give one peon for that, then that would work out to several tareas that you have to do. Now, I understand this was a day of sort of community reconciliation in the history? Well, uh, I think it's just uh, remembering and uh, identifying the, the roots of uh, the tradition of doing this. It's one day where people uh, put aside any differences and work for the common good. Yeah. Today, there are hundreds of cities in the United States facing water crisis issues. The old water systems, the old ways of doing things were great, but they simply will not work today. 
Now, in 21st century, we have the technology to solve these problems. But it's going to take cities to be progressive and have the same vision of your ancestors and use the new systems that we have designed. With desalination and municipal plants, desalination plants powered by wind and solar, we can solve the water issues for many cities. This is Mars. And this is Venus.